Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. It's been a while, so hopefully we're not rusty. Let's solve count vowels permutation. By the way, if you're not aware, I've added a bunch of cool updates to neatcode.io and I'm continuously updating it. So check it out if you haven't and please feel free to leave me any feedback or improvements that you'd like. We're given an integer n and our task is to count how many strings of length n can be formed under the following rules. We're basically allowed to construct strings only using these five characters, but for each character there's a rule. Any a character can only be followed by an e character. Any e character can only be followed by either an a or an i and any i cannot be followed by another i. Basically, that means it can be followed by any other character except for i, so any of the other four characters. O's can only be followed by i's or u's, and u's can be only followed by a's. And of course, in this example, we're given a pretty trivial case where n is one. In that case, we can only create strings of one length, so each individual character can satisfy that. Immediately, let's start with a brute force case. Let's start uh, for n equals two. What would that look like? Well, initially we have five choices. The string can start with an A, E, I, O, U. Now we have five strings. One of them ends with an A, one ends with an E, another ends with an I, O, U. So going on this path, how many strings of length two can we create? Well, remember, A's can only be followed by E's. So the only choice we have here is to put an E. What about for this path? E's can only be followed by A's or I's. So we actually have two choices here. We can put an A here or an I. So we can end up getting two strings like this. I's can be followed by every character except for I. So here we'll actually have four paths, which are gonna be A, E, O, U. For O, we'll have two paths, I and U. That's what we're told over here. And U's can only be followed by A's. So here we'll have that path. So we can see for strings of length two, we can create three plus four plus three. So that's about 10. And we could continue down this decision tree, but you can tell that this might not be super efficient. We're doing this the very brute force way. And if you did continue this decision tree, you would notice some repeated work, but it's a little bit unusual so we're going down the dynamic programming track, but it's gonna be slightly different. Let me show you why. So here, the string is ending with the character A. The most important thing about all these strings is what is the last character, because that's what determines what the next character can be. We already know that for A's, the only character that can follow is an E. So we know for this one, there's gonna be an E. For this A, there's also gonna be an E. For this A, there's also gonna be an E. So one thing that's gonna be helpful for us is to map the last character to the count of how many strings end with that last character. So for A, we wanna know how many strings do we have that end with A. When we were at N equals two, when we were talking about strings of length two, we had clearly three strings that ended with an A. We wanna store that information for every single character we have. So for every of these five characters, good thing we have a constant number. So that's gonna be important for time complexity reasons, but this is five, it's a constant. We don't really care about constants. So back to the idea of mapping to the last character, we'll have something that looks like this. So for each character, we'll have a row and the columns are gonna represent what's the length of the string. So for length one, how many strings will we have ending with an A? We'll have just one string. How many ending with an E? We'll have one. We'll have one for each of these. But for length two, we know it gets a bit more interesting. How many strings do we have ending with an A? Well, we counted that we had three of them. So we can put a three over here, but what's a good way to calculate this without necessarily going through every single branch, every single possibility? Is there a formula we could use to calculate this? 
Well, we can, and we just need a tiny bit of reverse thinking. Instead of thinking what goes at the end of a string that has A, we already know that A's can only be followed by E's, but that's gonna give us strings that can end with an E. We want strings that can end with an A. So let's look at, for every other character, which one of these characters can be followed by an A? Can E's be followed by an A? Yes, they can. Can I's be followed by an A? They can be followed by everything except an I. So yes, they can be followed by A's. Can O's be followed by A's? No, they can't. They can only be followed by I's or U's. Can U's be followed by A's? Yes, they can. So E's, I's, and U's can be followed by an A. So to get the value here, what value is gonna go here? What we can say is get the number of strings ending with an E, the number of strings ending with an I, and the number of strings ending with a U, add them together, and then we can get this, the value that goes in this position. So to summarize, this is what the math formula for calculating what would go in this position. And this is the case for the second column. So we have a two here and then ones in the other positions because we're looking at the previous column. But this could be generalized for this to be n and this to be n minus one. And that's assuming that this two dimensional grid we have is called DP because yes, this is a dynamic programming problem. And if we can create a formula for calculating how many strings end with an A, we can use this, a similar logic to do that for every single character uh, that we have here. And I'll show you the exact formulas in the coding explanation. I'll just quickly mention the case for the character O because it's interesting because O can't go at the end of a U, it can't go at the end of an A, it can't go at the end of an E, it can only go at the end of an I. So when we're calculating how many strings can end with an O, we're just gonna take whatever value happens to be at I and then you know copy that over here because O's can only go at the end of strings ending with an I. So in general, the way we're gonna calculate the result, we're gonna have some formula here, right? It's gonna take a few of these values, add them, and then put them here. And then the same thing could be said about each of these, right? So each of these calculations happens in O of one time. So doing all five calculations, let's say it just takes O of five time. It's just still a constant to do that. But how many times are we gonna have to do that? Well, whatever the N happens to be, if N is one or two, it could be a variable amount. It could be, you know, some big number. But the point is it's a variable, so we're gonna keep going until we get to n. So the overall time complexity, since each of these phases is constant time, doing it n times is gonna be O of n time complexity. The space complexity is also big O of n because yes, we have five rows, but five is a constant. We don't care about that. And actually, if you notice, to calculate the values in one column, we only need the previous column anyway. So actually the memory complexity could be condensed to be big O of one. So that's the idea, now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. And in the interest of time, you can see I've already coded it up, but I am gonna walk you through what this is. So first we have our DP, our two dimensional grid. We know that it's gonna be accessed something like this, where J, is going to be the length of the string. So it's not gonna be I in this case. So that's the length of the string we're looking at. And the second one is gonna be the character, the last character of the string. So you can see I have an empty list added because how many strings of length zero can we create? Well, I'm just not gonna consider that, but this is all the strings of length one. I've mapped each of the vowels to an index. So A maps to the zeroth index, E maps to the first index, et cetera, et cetera. For each of the characters, we have just a single string of length one. Now in the problem statement, they say that the number could end up being really big. So we have our mod constant defined. And as we compute the number of permutations, we're gonna be modding it by this constant. So now we're gonna start looping. We're gonna start at J equals two and keep going until we reach N. And J, remember, represents the length of the string. So initially what I'm doing here is just appending an array of five dummy values. I'm just initializing them to be zero. So this is where we're gonna put the number of strings of length two that end with an A are gonna go in this spot, that end with an E are gonna go in this spot, here I, here O, and here U. 
And at this point, I'm just doing the math formulas. I'll briefly explain each of these. So to get the number of strings ending with an A of length two, let's say J is two in this case, we just get the number of strings of length one, J minus one, that end with an E, added with the ones that end with an I, added with the ones that end with a U, because the character A can go after any of these three characters. So we add them together and assign it here. And of course we mod it because we don't want the number to be bigger than the mod. E can go after the character A or it can go after the character I. So that's how we're doing this here. I can go after the character E or it can go after the character O. O can only go after the character I. So we're not even adding anything to it. So we're not even having to mod here. And actually it looks like I forgot to mod down here. So we do need to mod here because we're adding a couple values, but here we don't need to mod because we're assuming that any value stored in our DP grid has already been uh, modded. And then the same logic could be applied to this formula as well. And then once we've computed all of those, all we know is in DP of N, we have some list like this. So DP of N happens to be an array, which tells us how many strings end with an A, end with an E, end with an I, O, and U. If we add all of those together, we get the total number of strings of length N that we have. And then after summing those, we can mod it. In Python, we never overflow, so I'm allowed to do this. But maybe if you're using Java or C++ or something, you would have to loop through adding two adjacent values together and then modding them instead of adding them all up at once. But now let me run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. If you're looking to practice more, check out neatcode.io. It's got a ton of free resources to help you prepare for interviews. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.